Today, we react to attempting a blind ultra sun Nuzlocke. As a man with seven billion trillion hours of Nuzlocke experience, just look at all these Pokemon videos. Some might say too many Pokemon videos. A ridiculous amount of Pokemon videos. We're going to react to a Nuzlocke because I'm smart and know how to do Nuzlockes. And Young Young Tails makes fantastic videos. Because I watched the other one, so I know. Also, when I asked if it was okay, they said, go for it. And that's awesome. After attempting my first Nuzlocke-ish thing and winning like a total boss, I decided it was time to take a vacation. And what better place than the Alolan Islands? I've never been, and it sounds like a great time, so I- Dude, this R is already looking good. Man, the amount of work that goes into this one video is just spectacular. Packed my things, kissed my Galarian Pokemon goodbye, and took the next Quailord out. Goodbye, stress and death, and Alola to rest and relaxation. No! I have heard the cries of your sons. You will assemble another bug team, and you will become the Lola's first champion. It's another Nuzlocke, baby. Now go for it. Here's your starter. <laughs> no, 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 no. There is no way I'm going to subject myself to that again. You'll get a chance to capture a very powerful bug Pokemon if you do. Now hang on, that's interesting. Okay, fine, but I'm not taking the seal. Let's go, Dwoople. And with that, facts based. Taking the owl instead. Interesting that Arceus would say that you must make a bug type team yet give him a not bug. Interesting that God would be hypocritical like that. My blind Pokemon Ultra Moon Nuzlocke began. Route one was chocked full of bug Pokemon, so <laughs> already my team was looking pretty good. We got Dwoople the Rowlet, Grubhub the Grubbin, Lenny the Ladybug, and Harry the Caterpie. Riding high, Wait, nothing. I love a bit of Yu-Gi-Oh references, please. As many of those as possible. Dude, it's gonna be so hard to catch all the references, but I'm gonna try my best. You can stop this unstoppable force. Apparently, my Galarian champion credits didn't transfer because before I could even start my journey. Say yawn. <laughs> it's yawn. Get good. Join school, says yawn. <laughs> I love how yawn is now basically canon in every single animated Nuzlocke. I had to go to trainer school first. It was so insulting. Like, do you even know who I am? And don't you dare say James. So I beat four trainers, including wiping the floor with this preschooler's metapod in the classroom. The teacher just standing there like, yeah, this is fine. But before the I- The style is so nice. calls me to her office. Come on in. I hear you've been picking on little children and their Pokemon. Emily? What are you doing here? Silence, punk! Now get wrecked! She challenges me to a Pokemon battle. You, you got Emma reach you on this? That's so cool. And she looks fantastic in this. I really love his art style. The blocky art style is so unique. I feel like a lot of the YouTube animators have something that is specifically unique to them. Like Jaden has uh, a very unique character and this art style is so cool. Using only one Pokemon. Except this one Pokemon was like the worst matchup possible. A Litten. Not only was the Litten strong Ooh. against Dwoople, but also against every single member of my team. It was an absolute blood. Jesus. And all that was left Nearly was the a year, smell baby. of charred bugs and barbecued chicken. Oh, dude, I totally forgot. I was so engrossed in the artwork. I totally forgot this was a Nuzlocke. Yeah, this, of course it's gonna, you get owned. I'm sorry, man, you got absolutely slammed. My journey was over before it even began. That's what you get for picking Rowlet. <laughs> if you're trying to do a hard Nuzlocke, you pick the, the Pokemon that will give your rival whatever, whatever is good against the monotype that you're using. In this situation, Litten's really good against the bug type team. So if you're increasing the difficulty, you give your rival the Litten at a school. My self-esteem was shot. Like I'd been through so much and I fought so many tougher foes and yet I am defeated by a total scrub. No, it's okay. This is exactly what happened to Ash at the start of Unova. So don't worry, you're good. If uh, my memory serves correctly, spoiler alert, he ended up winning as well. So this is actually a really good start when you think is about it. what it's like to be Ash Ketchum? So there you have it, everyone. That was my uh, long overdue Pokemon Ultra Moon Nuzlocke. Don't forget to Great. like and subscribe. Comment. Wow, what an amazing video. Best. That was video an amazing video. Year, honestly. <laughs> Buy that merch, roll the credits, and I'll see you in another three months. All right, so that was the reaction to the... Oh, we are less than 10% of the way through the video. Okay, let's uh, keep it going. There we go. That's it. Uh, enjoy, everyone. Don't say anything. Come on, Popsicle. I actually wanted you the entire time. Anyway, so actually, welcome to my blind Pokemon Ultra Sun Nuzlocke. Moon Nuzlocke, never heard of it. A lot has happened already, <laughs> so let me get you up to speed. I got a brand new dream team.
Popsicle, the Poplio, Dubby, the Ladybug, Precious, the Caterpie, and DoorDash, the Grubbin. I met Professor Dash. Kukui, who signed me up to take part in the trial challenge because God told me to. I saved a girl named Lily and her companion Nebby from a bunch of angry Spiros. Okay, well, actually, the bridge we were standing on collapsed, and then we ended up being saved by a mysterious island guardian Pokemon. No, 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 you did that. Z powering, so the, that was pretty cool. I met my rival. He already had a name, but from now on, we're just gonna call him Jagger Jim Bob Jow because okay, it's nice cool. name. And we're gonna be great. JJJ, much like J. Jonah Jameson. Rivals until the end of time. But I crushed him in our first battle, obviously. And oh, nice. I finally nice. get my revenge on Emily, which brings us to full circle. So, uh... Slammed. Absolutely destroyed. Also, I just realized, yeah, the Litten at the start isn't actually the rival's Pokemon. It was the teacher's Pokemon. The teacher uses the starter that is super effective against you, which I totally forgot about in Ultra Sun and Moon. Uh... Yeah! Pretty eventful first day, if you ask me. Onwards! Do -do -do. Who's that? Cat. Oh, I was gonna make a guess. I thought it was a Pokemon. I'm an idiot. It's a Battle Cat. Of course it's a Battle Cat. I should have known they're so common oh, everywhere. It's not part of the script. What? Oh, hey, speaking of which, if you're anyone like me, you are allergic to cats. So the only what? way I can truly- I'm so sorry. Is when cats are in digital form and can crush my enemies. <laughs> I love them so much. Introducing Battle Cats, a free is this a sponsor? mobile game where oh, you're in command of an army of cats on a mission. Nice. Conquer the world. You can choose yeah. from a menagerie of all kinds of cats. Whoa, like what the one. hell was that? And this one. And this okay, this one's kind of freaking me out a little bit. I love Battle this Cats. Battle Cats is so good. Oh, wow. Yep, Slender Cat. That one too. Wait, that's a cat? Oh my God. Wow. Definitely wow. a lot to choose from. And you can summon more. Ooh, look what I got. What? Okay, this is like the Warhammer 40K of cats. Yeah. Perfect. Get wrecked, you scrub! What is going on? The gameplay is like super easy to learn, you know, like make money, summon cat, enact violence. Yeah, that's what I do in my daily life as well. Make money, get the cat, enact violence. It's all part of the to-do list. Very good gameplay. Very chaotic. Especially if you summon something. Is there a like dragon this. in that cat? Can your what? army of cats defeat whatever these things are? Well, there's what is going on? Find out. Awesome limited time events are available now with exclusive epic looking rare capsule heroes, spectacular stages, and daily login bonus rewards. If complete world domination through an army of hilarious looking cats sounds like an enjoyable pastime, then be it sure does. to use the link in the description below to download. Ah, okay. Or Android for free. Or fine, you you've QR convinced code. me. I don't. You mean that QR code, QR code on the screen right now, which I will allow to sit for a second, just for a second, so that you can use Young Young Tails QR code to download the game, so that it benefits him. All right, have you used it? Okay, I'm sure if you're gonna use it, you would've used it by now. That was probably the most high effort sponsor segment I've ever seen. Very rarely would you see people animate a sponsor segment. That takes a long time. Watching this on your phone though, unless of course you have like two phones, then you are clearly a very powerful person. And I think you'll like you. this game. Anyways, be sure to check it out and thank you to Battlecats for sponsoring this video. Two. I have two Wumble phones. Cutie Fly joins my team and we proceed to the Verdant Cavern, home to my very first trial. Instead of gym leaders and badges, there are powerful totem Pokemon guarding special stones. We beat them, then we can have the stone. Very simple. And first trial on our list was totem gumshoes. Damn. Dash smacked him with a bunch of mud slaps so he couldn't hit us at all. Precious Good try. him out with sleep powder and then Dubby punched him in his sleep. A lot. This is crazy. The first time I've ever seen a Lydian actually do anything in its entire life. Does he even get fine type moves by this point? Would it even be useful? I mean, the only thing it could do is act as like a, a sacrificial lamb to kind of whittle down some of your enemies. I do have a general bias against the Lydian evolution line though. Lots of punches though, so uh... Dubby, we gotta work out more. But first trial is complete nonetheless. Professor Kakui meets me outside to show me how to use the Z crystal ring, but not that this one is of any use to me. Lily apparently has this tendency to get lost and wandered off, so it was up to me to go find her on Route 3. We eventually do find her in the meadow, but Neb- Why is she constantly crying? I mean, it does fit her uh, personality throughout the entire game. If she's always crying, like right up to the e very end of the game, it's gonna be she funny. keeps running away from us, and when we do catch up to it, I'm challenged to a battle by this futuristic robot guy named Dulce, who's a member of the Ultra Recon Squad. Ooh. Well, his for foul looks like it could use a real super effective punch to the face. I'll slap myself if this Ledian is still alive at the end of the game. There's no way. Dubby. <laughs> I did like, yeah, literally. Wait, is, no, is that it? And thus, the first Wait. blood of the Nuzlocke. <laughs> 
way, dude. I did not think it was gonna die seconds after I said that. I didn't think it was gonna last very long, but my god, that was quick. Looking forward, we ran into none other than Jagger Jim Bob Jow. He too finished his trial and felt like he could take me on, but you know what? I just lost Dubby and I just wasn't in the mood, so I showed him no mercy. Let's keep this. Honestly, of all the things that could have died, I wouldn't be that upset about Dubby. I'm, I'm gonna get attached to DoorDash. I think DoorDash is a really funny name for a Grubbin, and I love Vika Vault, so I won't think that thing to survive to the very end. But Dubby, like, it can go. And with Dupe's Claws, you don't have to get another one, so there's no more Ledians to worry about in this entire series. This thirst for revenge going and take on the big kahuna of Mele Mele Island. All of his Pokemon were fighting types, so, you know, no real concern with Precious and Wumples taking the lead. I actually had no idea that fairy types were super effective against fighting types, so, you know, it's just another one of those fairy matchups that makes no sense, but... Cutie Fly is so underrated. I love that thing. It is fast. It has sticky webs. It has good typing. It has moon blast. It has wings that it can fly with. Like this is going to be a hard carry. Believe me, it's really but good. Regardless, victory was in hand and the next island of Akala waits. Hey, hey, a city is where we do some sightseeing, beautiful. shopping, if Wait, was that was that an Alpha Rad statue? Hey, 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 Wait, was that? is where we do some sights. Oh my god, it is! <laughs> it's an Alpha Rad statue. That's, that's so funny. I'm trying to keep my eye out for the cameos. I'll try. Shopping, evolving, and then I head over to Peniola Town where I square off once again against my rival, old Jim Bob here, like some old Western. It should be an easy fight. <laughs> Too slow, wow. Bub. Okay, that's for cool. I. Little references. It's a Western town, so you draw. I'm drinking cool. too much Moo Moo milk, and when I woke up, I found this fun little bunch known as Team Skull and Gladion, who challenges me to a fight. He didn't give me too much trouble, so we're good. And look at that! It's already time for my second trial at Brooklet Hill. That is one big water spider. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no one is super effective against anyone in this situation. You got bugs versus water types. It's a pretty even Stevens kind of matchup. I remember this trial specifically being a little bit hard. The problem with bug types is that they do not hit hard, especially early game. You got yourself a cutie fly, potentially. You got yourself Butterfree. I think the general tactic here is like, use sleep powder. This was actually a pretty tough fight because the Araquanid had a weather boosted bubble Don't beam miss. and Aurora Beam. Like, how did that even happen? Also, I forgot to mention that in addition to the powerful giant monster you're fighting, you also have to take on its horde because apparently on this island, 2v1 is considered fair. So that definitely sucked, but we managed. I Charger Bug should be able to do it though. Oh wait, the Poipole is still on the team. Sorry, I thought it was a, a bug only team, but we're still using the Poipole, which is, it's fine, yeah, that's popsicle fine. Distracted so that way I could heal up DoorDash again. I made the switch and I finished the rack when it off. Insane to think Jeez. that we survived that unscathed, but now I have Mr. Munchie. And thank goodness, too, because the next trial was on a volcano. Oh, yeah. With a Such a good add to the team. Araquanid is where everything turns up. Water Bubble is a ridiculous ability. Water Bubble halves the damage, I believe, that fire type moves. No, no, sorry. It makes you immune to burn, but also doubles the damage of water type moves that you use, which is ridiculous. To combine the, the two is insane. Lolan Marowak. Good job, guys. But oh my gosh, the third trial with Lorantis? That was like super annoying. It was supposed to be a simple bug to grass matchup, but all this bug imposter did was heal itself nonstop with its ally who, guess what, also healed it. Eventually, this is taking me back to 2017 when we first originally played these games. We got to this trial and we got slammed. I did a Nuzlocke of my first playthrough. I did a blind ultra sun Nuzlocke too. So I know how you feel. And it's gonna get crazy later on, but this trial specifically was so anxiety inducing because it can heal itself and then you have the comfy providing support and then if you kill the comfy there's something else that will come down and provide more support so you have to focus on killing the Lorantis but it gets the stat buffs and it can use solar blade which should be a two turn move but then the sun's up and then you, it's it's big it's Initially, scary a few hours later we do beat it and i found a pincer i named stud what's behind that rock good ad i'm not really sure but i'm probably going to come back here hello Oh, hey, Professor. There's a giant wormhole that just opened up. Oh, you mean the large crack in the sky? Yeah, I see that. Oh, that's fine. Hold Don't on. I'm going to have to call you back. I think some pigtail lady it's wants okay. to fight me. Anyways, with that taken care of, it was time for the second grand trial with Kahuna Olivia. Now, she's a rock type user, which makes things a little bit hard for your little bugs. We got like a charger bug. We got Q fly on the team now. We have a pincer. I don't think we have anything on the squad that resists it. We do have the poipole. Oh, sorry, not the poipole. The polyp. Polypa, Poplio in the team, the Brion. So if we're still using that, that could probably clean up the situation. 
She uses rock type Pokemon, which, you know, are usually pretty strong against bugs. Unless the bugs attack first and no water and grass moves. Which oh, the Raccoonid. I forgot about that. We have the Raccoonid too. I did. That said, her Lilith became way too strong by stacking up some ancient power boosts. Basically, it put my entire team in a bad spot. I didn't think it was that fast yet, so I sent in Wumples no. to quickly finish no. it off. But, oh, I was wrong. He couldn't take another hit, and the Lily will for sure Jesus Christ. Bird. But I had to take this opportunity, so I am sorry, Wumples. No! But his sacrifice opened no! up to victory. I'm so Not sad. Not long after mourning the loss of another fallen teammate ever since- I'm so sad. I genuinely love the cute fly evolution line. It's so awesome. an invitation from a mysterious bug looking man to come to a special island. So I hop on a ferry and I travel to- What is Ether that? Paradise, which is what actually the goddamn not an island, but just a large floaty thing. There we meet President Lumine, <laughs> I mean Lusamine. Who the, who was that? Listen to her spiel about building the island to be a safe haven slash utopia for all Pokemon. And then this giant alien jellyfish just randomly appears. And of all people, I have to fight it. I don't even know what is good against this thing. So, uh, everyone attack. <laughs> well, that it is so fun to do a blind playthrough of a Pokemon game because you have no idea what's happening. That's why whenever a new Pokemon game comes out, I try my best to avoid the leaks, avoid looking at even if the later trailers, because going into a blind, having your first reaction and just not knowing what's going on is probably the best way to experience a Pokemon game. Other people might say it's different, but it's going to hurt you in scenarios like this, where in a hell ago is a rock type and the bug types are generally not so good. But this is a fight that's uh, pretty easily winnable. That though. Answer me, you stupid jellyfish. Where's your bug friend? Who sent you? It didn't answer me, but we did later learn about a Pokemon called Necrozma, who is evil and wants to consume all light on this planet. Is Necrozma evil? Like, what is evil at the end of the day? Do we just prescribe evil as the opposite to our own interests? Is Necrozma truly evil, or is he simply a being that is following their own self-interest, their own instincts. Could you really say that something that is just following its instincts is evil because it is the antithesis of what we want to achieve? Maybe he's just hungry for a bit of light. But who cares about that? Because it's on to the next island and my fourth trial. Let me tell you, that one sucked. Even more than the last one. This spiky puffball kept protecting itself with bounces and spiky shields while his buddy Skarmory spammed spikes and torment. The only super effective moves I had was Stud's Brick Break, but he could probably get one shot by a bounce. Fighting a Skarmory with a bug only team is the equivalent of smacking your head against a wall as a way to knock the wall down. Like, yes, you may eventually knock the wall down, but you'll be dead way before it even comes down, so it doesn't really matter. And DoorDash's Dig, which fortunately is just not that great to begin with. DoorDash would use Dig, but then the Togedemaru would use Bounce, the Dig misses, Skarmory would then use Torment, so I can't use Dig again, and oh look, there goes a chunk of DoorDash's health. You guys suck! So the idea is that <laughs> DoorDash is doing no damage, and then Skarmory just starts laughing at him. <laughs> Because he's doing no damage. And then poor little Charger Bug gets all frustrated and flustered because it's not going to evolve until like seven years on because you can't get a Vikavolt until the final area of the game, which is really dumb in my opinion. You should be able to get a Vikavolt relatively quickly. It's a really good mom, but it's not ridiculously overpowered. And they made a lot of the Pokemon only accessible like right at the end. Like, what is this, Unova? You want me to raise a Pokemon to some ridiculous level before you actually let me use it properly? It's dumb. Some of the design choices in this game really boggles my mind. Mr. Munchie was the tankiest member I had. Not in the Ultra Games? Oh, it did. Oh, they updated that in the Ultra Games. You can get it early in the Ultra Games. That's true. I was thinking about Sun and Moon where you couldn't use it until like right at the end. Because it feels like when they made the Sun and Moon games, they actively put in bad things that they could they then later solve. It's like Apple. It's like solving, selling the solution to a problem that you created. Like, oh, sorry, you can only buy these specific things from Apple that work on Apple devices. And we're creating problems and issues with certain devices so that we can sell you the solution. Anyway, I'm just glad that they don't make those ultra type games anymore. I just want them to make fully finished games. But then I look at Scarlet and Violet, I'm like, oh, that's not a fully finished. So he chipped away at the health bar as best as he could, and he was able to protect against some of the bounces, but unfortunately he did oh. end up getting critted. Precious That's a huge loss. Spiky battlefield and sustained heavy damage, but in her last moments she- Does Precious take damage from spikes? I thought it was a ground type move, so it does- do you still take damage from spikes? He managed to put the Togedemaru to sleep, ultimately giving DoorDash the opportunity we needed and landed the final blow. We completed the ridiculous trial, but at a heavy cost. This
Damn, two losses. And that's a big loss. The Butterfree, not so much. The Butterfree fell off in value like seven gyms ago. But the Araquanid, that's a huge L Simon for the squad. Awful. You know, this was supposed to be a chill and relaxing thing, but instead, it's an island of death and anguish. Precious and Mr. Munchie, no! Okay, well, after that fiasco, I had to really rethink my approach to this whole challenge. I have lost way too many good Pokemon, and I'm barely, like, halfway through my trials. My current reserve of usable Pokemon was, uh, yeah, not so great. So Okay, so Masquerain could be useful. If you get Quivadance, you can throw on the team, it can do a little Quivadance action. It can be good. It also has Intimidate, which obviously Intimidate is one of the best abilities in the game. It lowers the attack of Pokemon when you switch in. Ariados could be potentially used as a meat shield or a sacrificial lamb. Send it out to be nuclear bombed instead of another Pokemon getting hit. That's the real value in Ariados. There is nothing else you can use it for. Okay, I googled bug types in Ultra Sun and <laughs> they gave me... They gave me Ghastly. I don't even think you can get Scatterbug or Swaddle. I don't think any of this is even right. According to this, we get access to Volcarona, Fortress, Armaldo, Masquerade, and Robombi. Optional is Parasect, Butterfree, Lydian, Aridos, and Beedrill. So there is really not a lot of options here. This is pretty bad. We still have Glycopod that we can get. We need the Glycopod for the war types because Araquanid is dead. Um, Volcarona doesn't evolve until super late on in the game. Fortress is... A good defensive wall, but it's kind of boring to use, but I guess you don't really have many options, so you have to go grab it at some point. Armaldo is a fossil, which is not until, like, the, what, the third island, so we can't get that just yet. But actually, I think we're at the third island right now, so we might be able to use it now. So we'll see. We, we don't have many options left, is what I'm trying to say. Well, I had to take some time to do a bit more research on the island and uh, see what I might have missed, and hopefully... I can bolster the team. <laughs> I evolved a Pinaco, I named there it a is. Ball and revived a Cloth Fossil to get Spike the Ant. There you go, okay. Save you for later. I arrive at- So it's not great, but at least we have a little bit more offensive presence with Armaldo, and we have some defensive presence with Fortress. It doesn't really do anything, but it can set up like maybe entry hazards to whittle down some other Pokemon when other Pokemon are going ham on them. And to be fair, we do still have the Brion on the squad, which is gonna turn into Primarina. And Primarina is amazing. That's pretty good as well. Secret garden place and meet Guzma, a fellow bug fanatic trainer. We can totally be best friends, but unfortunately, he's also Team Skull's leader. And uh, yeah, me and Team Skull aren't on the best of terms. Professor Gakui is also there for some reason, and he just tells Guzma straight up that I'm better than him. I mean, hey. facts. <laughs> So understandably, Guzma disagreed and he challenged me to a battle. This island isn't big enough for two bug lovers. Bring it, bug eyes! Guzma's infamous Galissapod comes out first, but my gumball is a super tank, so his Galissapod couldn't do anything to him. Oh, you're sucker. Damn, that animation is so fantastic. I mean, I just need to say, if you haven't seen uh, Young Young's videos before, like, what do you do? Go and subscribe to him. They're so good. Failed. Oh, what a sucker. His masquerade, though, was actually a lot stronger than I thought. Almost knocked Gumball out. But thank goodness for Popsicle. After that, I took a slight detour on Route 8 to pick up Tanjiro, the Wimpod, and on our way Tanjiro? to Tanjiro? DoorDash, finally. <laughs> I just started watching Demon Slayer. And I will say, I've heard people dunk on Tanjiro. I don't get it. I mean, I'm pretty much halfway through season one or something like that. But I kind of like him. Evolves him. into a Vika Volt at a power. Yes, point. that's huge. Okay, the team is coming together now. We got like a pretty big team. You're not going to get an Armaldo until level 40, unfortunately, because Anorith is wank and terrible. But still, it's really coming together now. Protect the Nebby. What? In Protect Tapu the Nebby. Village, we went to meet the next captain at the Ether's house, but... Intruders! Sick of Mungus! What? The captain named Acerola returns, and then she sends me over to an abandoned superstore for the next trial against Mimikyu. This was an interesting fight because I had no idea what was super effective against Mimikyu. Wow. But that's why we have Gumball, who tanked everything, chipped away at the Mimikyu, and DoorDash swooped in and delivered the final blow. I got a good job for a Thunderbolt to the base! Trial. We come back to the either. Damn, you got you got Thunderbolt on the Vicovolt already. I'm trying to think what the Fortress's moose would be. By a level up, we're looking at like payback, explosion, iron defense. Oh, Gyro Ball. Gyro Ball's good for this fight. I don't think that he'd have Gyro Ball just yet. I mean, he could be level 46. I'm pretty sure level 46 would be super old level level for the Mimikyu fight, so maybe not. He's got like spikes at the very least. That's good for it to have. It's not really got much else like bug bites. I guess you could get some level 
one moves with heart scale, potentially. And he probably has some TMs to give him access to something else, but <laughs> Fortress is not doing much damage. Your house, and I find out that Team Skull kidnapped Yungus, and that if I wanted it back, I'll have to travel to Po Town alone and fight the boss. Why they would take some child's Yungus is beyond me. Like, look, there's literally a wild one right there. En route to Po Town, on Route 16, I caught a Rabombi and named- Oh, okay, we're allowing recaptures. That's great. You're gonna need that. That's gonna be huge. Solid. Now, before any of you start writing in the comments, whoa, John, that's cheating, because you already got one, man. <laughs> You're a monster. I caught its pre-evolution, all right? Facts. So while I can't catch another cutie fly, I can catch its evolution because I haven't done that yet, so. Alternative argument is he can do what he wants because it's his run and there are no set runs to, no set rules to a Nuzlocke. It's all self improved rules. You just play however you like to play and however you enjoy playing. How about that? Anyways, outside of Po Town, there is this mysterious guy named Nanu. He tells me not to go inside, but I ignore him. Team Skull goons are everywhere, but my Pokemon are too strong for them and they can't do anything about it. We eventually reach Guzma once again, and just like our last encounter, Stud and DoorDash easily took out Guzma's Pokemon, but this time it was his Galissapod versus my Tanjiro. What a fierce rivalry. That I'll win. Guzma is defeated, nice. and I take back the Yungus. Can I just say, this is a little bit of an inside baseball thing for me to say. It doesn't really apply to people who have made videos on YouTube before. But man, he's doing a really good job with the music. Can I just say that? He's doing such a good job with the music. You'll have lower background music when it is like a transitional phase, or it's not an intense phase. Then you see, as soon as he got into the Team Skull area, where the battle with Guzma began, the, it elevated, and then... When it got to its pivotal moment, the music cut. Using music in videos is something that I absolutely love doing in streams because I think that it's such a powerful device that people don't take advantage of enough. And they're doing such a good job with it here. When I get back to Ether's house, however, I find out that my entire journey was just a distraction so that Team Skull could come back and kidnap Lillian Nebby. You didn't protect the Nebby! Guess we gotta go get him back. Gladion has a feeling that Lily was taken to Ether Island, so Gladion, Jagger, Jim, Bob, Jow, and I took a ferry to get there. Before we could leave, Nanu appears and reveals himself to be the island's kahuna. Nanu? More like Nani? Okay, yeah, that's a note. We have the grand Good one. child right then and there, but you know, bug versus dark, it's just not really a competition. Uh, but hey, it did give me a chance to bring out Spike for the first time, so that was pretty cool. Finally, we hit level 40 where I can, you can actually use the fossil for once. It's not dog water wank anymore. Send these dark Pokemon back to the abyss. Now we're off to save Lily and Nebby. Yeah, we're going to go see them now. see the president, you'll have to get through all of us. Okay. I challenge you. I refuse to believe that a fortress took out all of those people without five business days passing first. No, we can't let you stop loose of me. You are too late. With Nebby's powers, we will be able to open up a portal to another dimension where Necrozma is waiting. There, Guzma and I will defeat it, and I will save all my precious Pokemon. It is crazy the amount of confidence she has in, like, the local hooligan. <laughs> I'm sure you have many questions as to how Gladion and Lily are tied into all of this. For I am none other than their mom. I mean, I didn't want yeah. to assume, but yeah, it was pretty obvious. She then goes on She's to still say crying. that she would back off if I were to beat her in a Pokemon Fable. battle. So I do, but then she Easily. goes, Psych! Uses Nebby's powers and her, along with Guzma, jump into a portal. Bye bye! Leaving Nebby in the shape of a stone. They are most likely way over their heads, so we figured it's a good idea to go after them. And in order to do so, we need a legendary Pokemon that can. Oh man, this ending section is gonna look so good, isn't it? Transport us across dimensions. And apparently, they can only be summoned by two flutes. The Dude, I love the contrast of the drawings too. Oh, it brings so much life to the video. The really intense moments with the scary Pokemon have incredibly detailed art. Whereas the, the more doofy, like, oh, who cares? We need some flutes, pause. This is like, ah, oh, it's a fucking flute. Look, it's a fucking flute, Boom man. And sun flute. Gladion already has one, and the other one is on Pony Island. We have our headed.
We arrive at Seafolk Village and are greeted by Captain Mina, who then points us to talk to a girl named Hapu. Hopefully this is the person that can help us locate the island's kahuna, who can then tell us more about this legendary Pokemon that we know little to nothing about. The world hangs in the balance. Yeah, we don't have a kahuna here. Oh, well, but it's you. that is incredibly unhelpful. Oh, hey, speaking of ruining your hope, meet me later at the Ruins of Hope. So that just happened. Her grandmother showed up later and showed us how to move giant boulders. I left for a moment to go get something. And then we headed over to the ruins. While there, we witnessed Hapu receiving a blessing from the island's guardian, and she became the brand new Kahuna of Pony Island. And because she's Kahuna, now apparently she's allowed to tell us that the flute we need is on Executor Island. Was all which we couldn't tell you before. No other reason than we're just trying to be a little bit difficult. Is necessary? I don't know, but we have our heading. No, no, no. It's it's an ancient culture. It's it's cultural. It's uh, it's traditions. It's rituals. It's very important to the people of Alola that the correct correct rituals and traditions be followed. This is very common on island nations. I think we arrive on Executor Island, and uh, oh, what a sight! We save the Alolan executors by removing the pincers that are stuck on their head. I caught a Tropius because they are awesome and shut up. It's not like I'm going to be using it anyway. The sun flute is ours. Back on Pony Island in the vast Pony Canyon, there is- This is the first person I've ever seen that likes Tropius, I'm going to be honest. Then it's going to be the one person in the comments. The one person that's like, actually, Daniel, <laughs> there are three Tropius enjoyers and I'm one of them. The shrine that we're supposed to play the flute set. Blocking the entrance, Dulce of the Ultra Recon Squad tries to stop me once again. I am much better than I was before, and maybe I can even take on Necrozma myself. Now watch my amazing powers. Pipo, use nasty plot. Yeah. Hey man, really listen, that's I a good move. On, and the only thing now standing <laughs> in my way was you don't a even get for Camo and a Noivern because Camo trial just happened to be on the way. <laughs> Looking at the situation and common trends of this Cursed Island challenge, even though Pollen was strong against both, I had a pretty good feeling that Kamo or the Neuvern had something that could one-shot Pollen's. I feel like the Neuvern's gonna come equipped with a Night Slash, or sorry, an Air Slash. I mean, Kamo can learn Poison Jab. I don't think they have Poison Jab in this fight. Yep, here's your problem right here. See, uh, you got a Kamo that has Poison Jab and also a Roselli Berry, which reduces the power that a Fairy type move would do because it is quad weak to Fairy moves. So your instant thought is to use Fairy type moves, but then you use a Fairy type move and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You've been Poison Jabbed and now you're dead. It also has a backup Scizor that could come in if the Neuven goes down and the Neuven does have Air Slash. So really robust. Bombi's in a, a pretty bad situation here. It, it should die to anything. So I resorted to the best strategy I knew how by having Gumball use Toxic and stall until Kamo died. Not the most nice. dignified strategy I've done, but uh, it hey, works. I easily got the comma out of the way and allowed Spike to finish off the Neuvern. And yeah, that's the, I mean that's how you do. It. If you look at the moveset here, there's not really anything. It doesn't have any fire type moves. That's Drain Punch, Dragon Claw, Thunder Punch, and Poison Jab. If you poison it, it can use Drain Punch to get its health back, but it's gonna die eventually. It's gonna die really quickly. Bestowing upon us the Dragon Z Crystal, which is useless to me. We climbed yep. an absurd amount of stairs, and with whatever air we have left in our lungs, we played the flutes. The music awakens Nebby, and it evolves into a giant lion-looking Pokemon. Turns out looks that so this good. was the Pokemon that can transport us across dimensions, and it was with us the entire time! What? And just as we were about to leave... So how'd it go? <laughs> Run! That Just a little trauma, monster. don't worry about it. Whoa, yeah, and I thought Eternatus looked weird. In its newest shiny form, Nebby and Necrozma duke it out. He fought bravely, but Necrozma was stronger, and eventually Necrozma prevailed, allowing it to absorb and fuse into Nebby. And with that- Oh done, my god, that looks so good, dude. It is kind of funny how quickly, if you play Sun and Moon, then you get to see Solgaleo actually be imposing, intimidating, and dangerous. If you only play Ultra Sun and Moon, you get to see Nebby finally turn into its, finally form, its final form and immediately get completely annihilated by Necrozma. That would be like watching Goku go 
Super Saiyan for the first time ever and then immediately die to Frieza. <laughs> or immediately have Gohan at Super Saiyan 2 get absorbed by Cell and you're like, oh, well, that was a bit of a shame, really. But the reason why Sugalia lost this is because it is a cat creature. And as a cat creature, we know that its most powerful attack at its disposal is the bunny kicks it does with its hind legs. We didn't see any bunny kicks in this fight, which is why it lost. And more portals opened up in the sky and these weird Pokemon come out of them, including the one that I have been searching for. Ah, oh, finally. Okay, but it looks like I gotta deal with this Aslan imposter first. Once again, I am put in that classic situation where I don't know what's effective against this thing. But regardless, faithful and reliable Tanjiro was able to land some good hits. Good thing I taught Tanjiro bulldoze because that was perfect and it took Necrozma out. Defeated, nice. Necrozma retreats through a wormhole leaving the island enshrouded in darkness. Bye bye. Okay, but not exactly like the darkest day. It's more like the second darkest day. You have to go after it. Here. The professors, the presidents, President Rose is in the background like, see, see, I, I told you guys, it's happening again. I was right. I told you. Did President Rose ever get arrested? Take a ride on our Lunala. It will allow you to travel through dimensions as well. Defeat Necrozma. Save the world. Riding on top of the Lunala, I am transported to Ultra Metropolis, Dulce's home planet, where Necrozma is waiting on the top of a tower. And it is there that I am met with the biggest challenge yet. So this is every Ultra Sun Nuzlocke's worst nightmare. Look at these stats. We're going up against 167 special attack, 129 speed, 167 attack, defenses that are all pretty decent as well. We're going up against stat buffs because it gets stat buffs as well. We're going up against Photon Geyser, Smart Strike, Power Jam, and Dragon Pulse, which covers so many types and you're doing it blind. You didn't even know this was coming, which is the worst part. If you play this blind, then you don't have the ability to think beforehand, oh, I should bring a Zoroark and use Toxic because you don't have any idea what's coming your way. If you play this blind, you're most likely gonna lose. When I played this blind, I'm gonna be honest, I lost this, so I'd be really impressed. I mean, he obviously gets through it, but I'm just impressed. I wanna know how he does it because a bug type team, it's pretty good. It's a good idea to have in this scenario. Fortress is probably going to be the one to do it. I imagine it's going to be Fortress, Toxic, a little bit of stall action, bada bing, bada boom, we win. More stairs. I managed to climb to the top of the tower, massively out of shape and out of breath, but still ready to defeat Necrozma once and for all. But when I reached him, oh, he wasn't done. Necrozma used the rest of its power to transform into its final form, his oh my ultra God. form. Wow, look at that. Okay, well, you the may colors be are fantastic. bigger, more shiny, but Tanjiro beat you once, he'll beat you again. Wait, level 60? Nope. Impossible. You no. Know. And I, my entire team was obliterated. What? And just like that. Really? My entire journey was over. But you know what? I feel like I deserve a pass on this one. Like, there was no way that I could have known that that thing was going to be this strong, let alone adequately prepare for it. <laughs> like, bruh. This is real life, man. I don't have a device that lets me see into the future. I'm just saying this whole thing was kind of rigged. So here's what happened. In fairness, I was given a second chance. However, I would need to make a sacrifice of one of my own Pokemon. And oh unfortunately, God. I had to pick Pollen. But... Exactly what I did. <laughs> they make it very Dude, hard indeed. I uh, I yeah, lost as well, brother. Me. I lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, holy fuck. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna. I guess I'll just be whack when I have a winning tactic. All right, I did the same thing here. So basically, what I've done. Dude, I lost the first time I played it, and I mulliganed as well. Do not worry. You are not alone. I did the exact same thing. We are one in this. We are the same. We are know, one in the same. It was better this way. So thank you, Pollen, for everything that you did for the team. And with that sacrifice, my team was revived, and this time we defeated Ultra Necrozma by toxic stalling again. Yes, I know, I That's know. That's how it's done, I knew it, I knew it. Jeez. Get another chance at life only to use a super cheesy strategy to beat a big bad boss. It's not the most satisfying feeling in the world, but it was the only one I could think of. But turn- Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. You gotta cheese, you gotta cheese. Most people that say the Ultra Necrozma wasn't a hard fight literally just sit there and toxic stall anyway, or they just use something that has a natural immunity or just a really good advantage against the Pokemon that are the, the, the boss battle. Most people just use Zoroark and use 
use disguise and make, make uh, like a cheese the AI. Although cheese poison. Because it's a really hard fight. It's a ridiculously hard fight. And if you don't see it coming, I think it's totally okay to do a little cheese. Sometimes some cheddar, some mozzarella can be a good topping to a nuzzle. Turns later, an amount of used up max potions, power of friendship, and oh, thank goodness, Gumball knows sturdy. Necrozma goes down and we save the world once again. But good job. Holy crap, that was rough. You're back. I see that using your mastery of the Z crystals, you were able to save the world. Oh yeah, I totally forgot I had those. But I mean, it's not like I would have been able to use them anyway. Do you want this poi pol? No. Do you want beast balls? Well, <laughs> actually, I have beast balls. I mean, yes, thank you. Let's see, where did we leave off? Ah, yes, my final trial. Reinvigorated with life, my Pokemon and I headed back to Seafolk Village to challenge Captain Mina. But considering- He should have the Buginium Z by now, unless he missed it, because you get it from that little box in the shady house. It's- Oh, is that not- No, he has done that. He's done that. Unless he missed it. I don't think he mentioned getting the Buginium Z at any point. So he might have just missed it from the chest, which would, would be really unfortunate, because that would be really helpful the for him. The fact that I just fought a giant Doom Dragon, going up against her team of fairy Pokemon was just not nearly as challenging. My team handled them with ease. You'd think I'm done, right? But unfortunately, no, because apparently that was only the first half of the trial. Now I need to go battle all the other captains that I met along this was the dumb. way and get pedals from them. And then I can battle the final totem Pokemon. Anyone else think this is dumb as bricks and making you do like a random contrived boss rush where you just go back and fight all the people that you either did fight already or should have fight should have fought, fought a while ago is just like made up and silly. So to speed things up, give me all your petals. Finally, I brought all of the petals back and they turned into a rainbow flower. Ooh, how pretty. And then they attracted the totem Rabombi. Pollen, is that you? And nope. with that, we obtained the Fairy Z Crystal. And finally, yes, finally, it is time for the grand trial on Executor Island where Kahuna Hapu is waiting for us. Her ground Pokemon were strong, but Tanjiro was just stronger. We are one step closer to our objective. But before challenging the Elite Four, it was time to do what I came here for. Bug hunting. Heck yes. Oh, are you gonna go Buzzwall? Dude, Buzzwall's crazy good. I forgot you could get it before the end of the game. Hmm, I don't think this is the right what? place. Nope. What? Summoner's Rift, what? Ooh, that is indeed very tempting, but no. That moment when you realize that you're the Pokemon version of Weevil from Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, Damn. Hey, well, this place is just weird. So no. Nope. 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 Eh. Nope. Get me out of here. Oh my god, oh it's real my life. Gosh, what just happened to me? He has a plush? Oh, what a nightmare that was. <gasps> I think we're here. <gasps> we made it. Get get yourself a buzzwall. You did you know what you we've deserve all it. Been training for is here. We have lost a lot of good members to bring us to where we are now, but all we can do is make them proud by what we do next. Some of you haven't been with us long, but in this short time, you have already convinced me that this is a team of champions. Now let's do this and get off this cursed island. Next round of Molasadas are on me. First of the elite Here we go. is Malane and a team full of steel type Pokemon. That's a rough start. Like you have a natural disadvantage against steel types because they're just insanely defensive and you're weak against them with your main type. Now, fire types would absolutely be perfect here, but for the longest time, I just didn't have one. Until now. Enter but the Vol- Oh, wait, I thought <laughs> I thought he was gonna say Buzzwall, but no, never mind. We just gotta we just have a Larvesta now. <laughs> we just got a Larvesta from somewhere. Oh, <laughs> And let me tell you, she was just oh, a easy sweep powerhouse. Those steel type Pokemon didn't stand a chance. Olivia was the next Elite Four member, and she came back with vengeance with her rock. Pokemon, Rocks are tough, specifically her Cradilly. But say hello to my second newest member. Yes, there he is. The Buzzwool. Your rock will crush me. Who decided that? Now. Why? <laughs> That's a roll. Oh man, that was way too close to the Beast Titan from Attack on Titan. That's really cool. Ah, dude, it's all coming together now. Is this where all the animation budget went to the end of the show? I mean, we've had some really good amount of animation so far, but I'm predicting the end of the show is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's going to be off the wall. Again, I still love the contrast between like the lower 
the lower budget, I don't know, lower budget moments, the lower drawn moments and the incredibly detailed, intricate moments with the when the battles are. What's the next member with ghost Pokemon? And technically I didn't have anyone that was super effective against her Pokemon, but- Oh no, you're down. good. Just hit them really hard. And Solar once again came out and stacked with a quiver dance and sent those ghost Pokemon back to the shadow realm. And you know what that is? It's the smell of victory. The rest of my Pokemon, we're just chilling. And now we are already at the final Elite Four member, Kahili and her flying Pokemon. Finally, something for the rest of the team to do. So I yeah, I would say like, oh, you have a natural disadvantage with bug types, but no, you're good. You have like rock types, you got electric types, you got steel types. No, you're absolutely fine. A tough battle with all of her flying Pokemon and a quick chat with Kahili that badminton is probably better. All that was left was the champion. Except wait, this He's not the doesn't champion. have a champion yet. Nope. When I reached the top of the mountain, Professor Kakui was there to greet me. As the man that set up Alola's first Pokemon League, he wanted to witness and crown the very first champion of the Alolan region. And who could have guessed that the final battle, the one to decide it all, would be between me and none other than my rival, Jagger Jimbob Jow. It's the final fight, baby! What's gonna happen? I wouldn't have it any other way. Here we go. Final battle time. All right, let's see if you won. Oh, it's the credits as well. Okay. I guess we're not getting any more post commentary. We just get to see what happens. Which is I can I can talk as much as I want. Okay, good start. Just go for a little bug buzz. You should be able to take it out nice and easy. Really good idea to combine the battle with the credits so you don't skip it. Leaf Home versus Volcarona, easiest W of your life. <laughs> Fantastic, good job. Yeah, I don't know why why he has a Tauros. Oh, it's music, man. So so good. Armando should be able to win this pretty easily, I'd imagine. Unless Air Slash flinches. Never mind, okay. Is it is it supposed is it ambiguous? As to who's winning these fights? I mean, this is not ambiguous. Buzzwall just absolutely destroys Crab Indomitable. Hello. Okay, well, the fact that you've just summoned an Incineroar from the ninth circle of hell does kind of bring a little bit of fear into me, but we'll see what happens. Uh oh. Uh. Is that. That is. I don't know about that. Wait, is that glitch? It reminds me of what happened in the Jaden video, the Platinum Jaden video. Come on, Tanjiro! Let's go, baby! Come on, Tanjiro! Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Did Incinero really kill the rest of the team? Oh, he's using Z moves? War Room Z? Oh my god, they're both using Z moves. This is so cool. Come on, Tanjiro! You got this, baby! Nah, he won, he won, he won. I think this was left internal, uh, intentionally ambiguous, right? For real this time. Oh my God, oh, that was so cool. Oh my God. Wait, oh, what was, what the fuck? What was that? Wait, 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 what was that? What was that, what flashed up there? What was that, was that Giratina? It was Giratina. Okay, either that is foreshadowing a potential platinum run, or maybe even Legends Arceus, because Giratina is like the main antagonist of Legends Arceus, or everybody died, but, I think the way that this is shot, using the Waterium, Waterium Z, I think that pretty heavily implies that uh, Incineroar should have died to Waterium Z. I don't know if the Incineroar managed to kill everybody else on the team. It would kind of make sense because if you look at the team at the end here, everything is relatively slow. So Incineroar would outspeed a Vykovol, it would outspeed a Buzzwall, it would outspeed like for all Fortress, it would outspeed probably Armaldo as well. Maybe the, the Volcarona wouldn't outspeed the Volcarona. So it technically could in theory kill everything else. But I think once the Glycopod hits the field, I'm gonna check its speed. Oh, Glycopod is 40 speed. 
but it has 140 defense. So if it's the last Pokemon, emergency exit is not going to trigger, so it's not going to swap out if it takes so much damage. It has a heaping helping of defense, and if you use the Water Z-Move, that's pretty much guaranteed KO, depending on your level, and I'm pretty sure he's a high enough level to be able to kill the Incineroar. So I think that he won, and this right here is like a, a teaser for the, the next one. That's that's a cool ending though. No. <clears throat> that was so well done. Like I said, the animation fantastic, the art spectacular, everything really re the storytelling really well done. Even though you're taking certain moments in Nuzlocke that might be a little bit lackluster, like if you were just watching someone play Nuzlocke and they were like, "Oh, I died on Ultra Cosmo, but I'm gonna give it another go," like I did, you're like, "Okay, that's a little bit disappointing." But when it's shown and it's told in such a good story, that it just becomes really, really, really good. It becomes a really entertaining video, and this is absolutely fantastic. I honestly think that you should be subscribed to Young Young Tales if you have not already. And of course the music, again, the music, really well done. The selection of music, fantastic. The usage, the increasing and reducing the volume at specific moments to bring uh, an emotional impact is really, really well done. This is just a great video. I mean, what can I say? It's absolutely fantastic. Very good, well done. Go and subscribe to him right now.